So with strawberries, it's a long-term investment. You're going to plant strawberry plants the first year. You're not going to get any fruit. The objective the first year is just to create a bunch of runners so that when you get done by the end of the first season, you've got a row that's got at least five or six plants per linear foot of row of nice big healthy crowns that will make strawberries for you the following year. To facilitate that, you plant your strawberry plants, you keep them well irrigated and cultivated, keep the weeds out of them. Then in about a month's time, they'll start to initiate flowers. And like I said, the first year, you're not looking to grow a crop of berries. So we actually go through the entire patch. It's pretty laborious, but we try to cut all the flower buds and flowers off. Because otherwise, this small plant you just put in will use all its energy to make half a dozen measly strawberries. So the sooner you can get those flower buds off the plant, the sooner the plant will go into the next transition where it becomes vegetative and it puts out runners and produces new plants. Initially, like everybody else, we started out on our hands and knees, pinching those flowers off. Early on, it occurred to me that there had to be a better way to do it. So we now use super sharp, long reach manual tree pruners. They're meant for a small scale orchard person to prune their fruit trees from the ground and they can reach four feet. So we found with a little bit of practice, somebody can, in a standing up position, you can walk down the rows and pretty skillfully clip all those flowers off without having to bend over. It's so much faster and easier than doing it on your hands and knees with a pair of scissors. Other than getting those flower buds off so that they can produce runners, the first year of the growing season is pretty much just constant cultivation and trying to keep the weeds out of them. The fact that you're cultivating pretty much on a weekly basis, the, any runners that kind of grow out into between the rows where you're going to walk, as you cultivate, you tend to sweep those back into the row where they belong and then they take root. Lots of irrigation lots of cultivation, and then around that time they start running, we put some nitrogen on them, and then usually later in the season, in August or early September, we give them another application of nitrogen. All those runners and crowns that you form the first year, inside them they're developing all the flower buds that are going to come out the following year, so you want to have a really high level of moisture and nutrient during that whole growing season to get really big, vigorous crowns that are going to make you a nice big crop of berries the following year. So then in the fall, once uh, they've become dormant, and it varies a little bit, it's usually late November, early December, once they've, you've had some 20 degree weather, then we'll chop straw and blow it over top of them, which insulates them and keeps them from freezing and thawing and, and going in and out of dormancy over the winter. and just keeps them kind of in a hibernation sort of a state, protects them from the cold winds and the extremes of cold. Hopefully if you get a good snow cover, you just wait till spring. Then in the spring, you need to get that straw off the plants because it acts like a mulch, like you would use to suppress weeds. You want to get the straw off the strawberry plants themselves, but leave it in between the rows. When I first started out, I just used a bamboo rake, but once we got up over two acres, raking more than two acres of strawberry plants was pretty brutal. So I made the investment in, we have a little miniature rake that runs with a hydraulic motor that you can vary the speed and it has um, gauge wheels on it so you can vary the height of it. And basically we try to set that up so it just skims along the top of the strawberry rows and just lifts the straw off the plants as gently as possible and just moves it over into the row where you're gonna be walking. You might fool around for half an hour, an hour to get it working, but in a few hours time you can complete that job. So it doesn't get a lot of wear and tear, but boy, it saves Compared to raking by hand, I mean, it would take you a couple weeks to do that by hand, probably. Once you rake the straw off, it's just a matter of keeping the moisture level right. If you're not getting enough rain, then you, we go ahead and set the irrigation up. A month before you're going to start having strawberries, they start flowering. At which point, once they start flowering, you have to watch your night temperatures. Because if you have open flowers and it gets below freezing at night, it will actually damage those flowers and those flowers won't bear fruit. Quite often, just before dawn, you know, five, six o'clock in the morning, the breeze will stop. And that cold air will just settle on your fields, and you can, you can almost see it sometimes. Everything will just start turning white right before your eyes. And if you don't, if you haven't got the water on, it's gonna burn all those flowers, and they'll turn black in the center, and you won't get a berry off of them. So, there's years where the frost protection is really critical. I mean, you can lose a lot of berries. 
the earliest strawberries would start to ripen up end of the second week of June. And for the first six or seven years, we opened up the U-Pick almost like clockwork about the 16th, 17th, 18th of June. We grow about 10 different varieties. So we have what are the earliest strawberry varieties as well as the latest ones that grow in this part of the world. So in an ideal year, we hope to have a strawberry season that will last about a month. Most varieties, once they start ripening, you have about a week, maybe 10 days to pick on them before they're, they're done. So it's a pretty concentrated season. Almost every week of the year you're working on them, but then there's this glorious three or four weeks when all the berries get ripe and you pick them. Once they're harvested, so around the middle of July or so, the strawberry picking season's over. At that point, the strawberry plants are kind of in a dormant stage where the leaves that are on them start to turn red and they kind of dry up and stuff, resting and senescing a little bit. And at that point, we do what's called renovation, where we mow all the leaves off of them with either a lawnmower or, or a brush hog. And we carefully do it that we don't actually dig them up or damage the crown of them. But we take the majority of the foliage off of them and chop it up. And then I go through with a multivator, which is a two-headed rototiller. And we till up the ground and basically destroy all but like a narrow eight, nine inch strip of strawberry plants. So we're kind of almost like starting over. So when we get done renovating, we've got just a very few strawberry plants left in a really narrow row. And once we've done that, then we go ahead and apply a lot of fertilizer, a lot of nitrogen, and we start irrigating like crazy, just like we planted a bunch of strawberries again. And what that does is it really induces the plants to start growing vigorously. So you're again trying to create that nice dense, at least five or six plants per linear foot of row to develop a whole bunch of runners and a whole bunch of new crowns that will bear fruit next year. You water and fertilize and then you start cultivating again just like you do in the first year to keep the weeds out and to sweep those runners into the row. And then the whole process happens again in the fall and we harvest them one more year.